All right, we are live and we're here with Bonnie, who thank goodness is going to give us some strategies and tips on how to stay consistent in our content marketing, because I love content marketing, but I am terrible at consistency. I'm pretty good at setting up a plan for myself for a few weeks, but then I get to the end of that and I'm like, oh no, I haven't got anything planned anymore and it disappears for months. So I can't wait to hear what you have to tell us. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here, Carolyn. Uh, content is such uh, an important part of of your marketing, and it's it's how you get visible. Uh, you need that exposure. There, there's so many you know busy things going on, and so many messages you know flying at us all the time. Uh, so content, having that visibility through content is is so important, and and the majority of content is free. Right. It doesn't co- other than your own time and effort. It, it shouldn't cost any money to do that. Right. So what um, kinds of things count as content? Let's give people a baseline idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you could even start with your website, which is uh, kind of an ongoing uh, project uh, because it, your website should evolve as as your business does. Um, so that's one type of content. But then think of that um, exposure piece, like how are you getting in front of people? So a blog could be um, a piece of content that's, that's regular, that you do consistently. Um, email, that could be an email newsletter, something that goes out regularly, or that could even be autoresponders. So maybe you have a download on your website that should be followed up with a series of emails so that people get to know who you are. So those are um, content pieces as well. There's social media, Uh, social media, whatever platform. um, And that could be um, text, right? Your text and, and graphic posts, graphics are content, photos are content um video whether that's an uploaded video or a live stream you know video like this that's also content you could look at uh podcasts podcasts are there's a mix i guess of audio content uh some are strictly audio and some are video Mm -hmm. um, as well and look at things like um the freebies that you give away or lead magnets, lead generators, there's lots of different uh, terms for them, but that could be a checklist. It could be a report. It could be an ebook. It could be a a mini training um, session. So all of those pieces, you're, you're giving away those for free. That's free content that you're putting out there. It's free for the consumer um, to take that as well. So, so those are just some ideas of what, what lot. Of content you can build. <laughs> yes, there's many, many, many pieces of content that you need for an online business, huh? Right. And, and it, it, it can be intimidating, but if you look at it um, like a plan, um, you know, even thinking about like a diet or going to the gym, you need to make some changes. You need to commit to the process um, and uh, maybe learn some new things along the way. I mean, if, I mean, I, I grew up in the sporting world, so I've learned how to, you know, lift weights properly or how to run, you know, how to do different things. Um, And I've been to many gyms, so I know how to use the equipment, Mm -hmm. but if you've never been, then it's all foreign and, um, you don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> Although I don't think you could hurt yourself <laughs> writing content, but. Um, oh, no, I'm sure there's some <laughs> folks out here who can find a way. <laughs> some, well, sometimes you, you might hurt yourself mentally. I know like p- people struggle uh, with content. Like I, I get that. Um, I've been there. I've been in the trenches. I've struggled as well. So, so I just sort of, I guess, I put a method together uh, and it's not necessarily step by step either, but for all of your marketing, number one, you need to know your audience, right? You need to know who it is that you're trying to reach. Who does your message need to get to? Um, And you need to understand 
what their challenges are. That's what, that's what your job is, is to, you know, provide the solutions for whatever problem that they're, that they have. Mm-hmm. And, and you can do that through your content, right? You can position yourself as the expert in solving those particular problems um, by giving them that free content without promoting necessarily promoting yourself. Right. Um, I often use the analogies around um like pets. Everyone has a pet or has had a pet or knows someone with a pet. Um, So if you think about um, maybe your puppy is chewing your shoes, your new puppy is chewing your shoes and you don't know what to do about it. So you Google online and you find, you know, um, this person's Uh, blog or videos and they're sharing different tips about how to stop your puppy from chewing and while you're on that site you see that they have other training videos or blog posts whatever their content is and and you like their style then you might you know buy their book or whatever their training or whatever it is that they're promoting so so they've provided that free information of how to stop your puppy from chewing their shoes without saying and then come and buy my stuff right it's just it's it's a service it's you're available. providing a service People can see it can see that it's there that's right that's right so you that's the first thing is to know that the challenge right that what the, the challenge is some people are really afraid of giving away too much of giving too much free what are your thoughts about that um I've heard this several times, but the first time I've heard it was, I don't know if you know, Mari Smith, she's like a big Facebook guru. Um, She said, because everybody thinks that way, right? But if, if I look at Mari and she's giving me all this stuff for free, that's so amazing. Imagine what you'd get if you paid for her services. (laughs) <laughs> right. So so you want to show your expertise. You want to show that you're the expert in that area or the authority. Um, so so that's important. So the, the free stuff should be still your best stuff. Yeah. Or equally good as your paid stuff. <laughs> that's, that's correct. And and you don't need to give away everything. Right. If 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 you're having a a training or coaching or, or whatever it is that, that you're, um, that you're offering, then uh, you've still got lots of good stuff left to, to provide. Right. So the, the other, the other thing about um, we talked about the type of content, but um, it's also you just like going to the gym or going on a diet, you need to commit to that strategy. It's, it's not going to, because I've seen, and I've done it myself. It's like, I put out a random blog post or, you know, maybe I'll send an email to my list or, you know, oh, I should post on Facebook today. Like it does, you aren't going to be visible and no one's going to get to know you if you do things sporadically or randomly, just like going to the gym. If you only go to the gym once a week, um, oh, but I can't go this week, right? You gotta go next week. You are not going to get any results. So uh, you need to commit to the whole idea and strategy like, okay, I'm going to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you need to pick a platform. So what, what are you, what do you think you would be comfortable doing and doing on a regular basis? So for example, might be a blog post um, or setting up a blog, not just a post. So maybe, uh, well, certainly you couldn't start out doing it daily that would be a recipe for failure right there. Right. Um, I personally, I only do a blog once a month. I do other types of content, but I commit to a blog once a month. That's a good place to start just so that you have some content and a blog sits on your website. So that's a place. um, That's a great way to get people to your website to see what essentially what you do and how you might be able to help them. So a blog, start out once you know if that's what you want to do um you could start out once a month and then you could increase uh, the frequency you know twice a month or get to a a weekly would be ideal um daily would be difficult unless you were very very specific in your niche and maybe if you had a team (laughs) of people i did actually i used to run a blog daily for almost 10 years and i remember thinking okay can i really keep up with daily 
Am I going to commit to that? And I made myself a list of topics and like a content, like topic idea for each day of the week. And I thought, yeah, actually I can, I can do this. And I, and I did, but man, I don't recommend that for most people because that, yeah, was not, it's, that was it's, not it's, funnel. it wasn't leading to anything. It was just the blog was my whole life. That was all I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, that's a good point. I mean, good for you for being able to, um, to produce uh, that much content um, and also good for you for planning that. That's, that's another idea of um, how to be consistent is, is to actually figure out what those topics could be. So a place to start there would be some research, right? Look at what your competitors are doing. Um, I often tell people to look across the opposite side of the country for like, say we were talking about dog training. So look at, I'm on the West Coast, so I might look at the East Coast or Florida or something, look for dog trainers in Orlando, Florida, and then find some people and, and look at what content they're creating. Is it videos? Is it blog posts? What are the topics? Um, another place to research is Amazon. Like go uh, look at books about your particular niche and then look at the reviews. So in the reviews, the five-star reviews are going to tell you what's good about what's in that book. Mm. The other ones, the like one star and two star reviews, those are going to be the people that are complaining. Uh, and those are going to be pain points. So potentially, you know, this, okay, this book is great for training a puppy, but I have, um, you know, an aggressive dog and I don't think this is going to work. So there's a blog post about how you can train an aggressive dog. So those are just snippets. And, and then you take those ideas. And like you said, you create, however, your own process of recording those topics. And sometimes those topics don't always rise to the surface right away. Sometimes you got to park them. It's like, okay, this aggressive dog post, I'm going to have to research more about that. Or it doesn't fit with my plan right now, but I, but I like the topic, so I'll just kind of keep it on my list. And then and then the ideas will start percolating of what I could talk about with that aggressive dog post or video or whatever it is I'm creating. Mm -hmm. So from the research, then you need to create your own kind of method or process. Uh, are you going to use a spreadsheet? Are you going to use some kind of an app? Like uh, I use Evernote, I use Trello, um, both very easy, both you can use on your computer and on your phone. Um, I am a big spreadsheet person, not not in the numbers sense, but <laughs> for, for yeah, organizing. Spreadsheets um, for everything. I love spreadsheets. But. Yeah, I, I, I find them quite useful. Uh, I'm not a numbers person, so there's there are zero formulas in my spreadsheets. Yeah. Unless I bought a template that has a formula in it, then that's yeah, then you can that. just copy it. <laughs> uh, a big fan of Trello too. I love Trello. Yeah, I I like Trello because it's it's very simple to use and it's very visual. I know a lot of people. I have a content planner tool um, that I give away but it's in a spreadsheet formula. So it's very lin linear um, and that, and that's, that's good for me and lots of people like that. Um, but Trello seems to work better for people that are visual because you can move stuff around and it's got little boxes and kind of like Pinterest, you know, where you've got boards and, and stuff like that. So yeah, what, whatever tool can work for you, you've just, you've got to create those things for you, for yourself. Cause those, those will keep help keep you accountable. Yeah. 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 The other thing that's the planning tool or a calendar. Um, that's really what it is. It, it is um, another way to keep yourself organized and accountable. So for example, in my spreadsheet, I've got what's, where are we in May um, <laughs> from May 1st to 31st. And I've, I've got the days of the week. So every Wednesday I send an email to my list so I, every Wednesday, I have an email color-coded, um, and I just mark it off. And then as the topics, you know, come together, whether I'm speaking somewhere or I'm hosting something or I'm in a giveaway or I'm collaborating with someone, those, you know, uh, and I know that months in advance, I can just plug those into my calendar as placeholders and then build out what that topic or content is going to be. 
as similar with my blog post. I post, I put a spot, you know, on a date. It's like, okay, blog's got to go here. Um, and if I've got a topic ready, then that just, that goes in there as well. So, and all my social posts, I put, I put everything in this calendar and because it's visual, I mean, it's I said it's linear, it's kind of linear, but it's still, it's color coded. <laughs> so, so that pops out for me. It's like, okay, I need to do this. And uh, that's how I started becoming accountable to myself and just being really able to be consistent with my own content. Mm. I've been using a the Google calendar for that. I realized one day that I could just create a new calendar that overlays onto my appointments so I can like be seeing one or the other. Oh yeah. Put all of the like, cause it's already got dates and then I can just fill in the dates. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's a really great idea. Yeah. I'll have a look at that. Yeah. You can color, you. Code it. color coding is so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the other piece around content is um, it's that it's that commitment piece, but it's also I think um, sometimes people are not always confident in what they're creating. Um, I get lots of clients that don't like writing, or they they don't think they're a good writer. You know, I hate writing. <laughs> I have I had a. Oh, a massage therapist, and and she didn't want to do any social media. She'd been there, done that, didn't want to do it. Um, but she came to me, and she wanted to start a blog. She had all these great ideas for how she could help her clients. And um, but she said, "But I hate writing." I'm like, "Well, <laughs> why did you pick a blog? Right? Like that uh, just seemed odd." But that you know that was her thing, and. Um, but she had a great way of explaining things. So I just, I said, just record it, put it in a audio, you know, on your phone, put it a recording on your phone, and then you can transcribe it. And just, it should, when you, when you write content, it should sound like yourself. It's, it should sound like a conversation that you're having with right. the person. Not like a, talking. like an English essay that <laughs> you're, that's right. People you people think you things it. should sound a certain way, you know, like that corporate speak, you know, they want to sound like a big business or something. It's like people want to talk to you. People mm -hmm. want to hear from you. Um, that's they want to get to know you. If you've got some valuable information, then just talk to them. Right. Just talk to them. Yeah, you can see a lot of examples in marketing of companies that went really personable and personality and, and what a winner that is. Yeah, definitely. I, I know with, with my emails that go out, um, you know, some of them are more, I guess, structured in a way, I guess, depending what, if, if I'm actually promoting something, I mean, that's a thing you, you can promote yourself. You're allowed here in business. You're allowed to do that. Just don't do it all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I get a lot of response from my emails just that people think they're, well, especially people that know me. It's like, wow, just I feel like I'm talking to you or you're talking to me, right? Like we're having a conversation. So I, I really try to do that myself. Um, and, it, and it makes a big difference. It's, it's, it's similar. Like I think it's easier with video to be more yourself. I think um, – because we're just so used to video and people are much more casual on video these days, right? Yeah, especially um, now all the practice we've had with Zoom meetings helps you get more confident and comfortable with the camera. Yeah, totally. And and many people were forced to do that. I mean, I have no problem with the camera. If there's a camera in the room, I'm, <laughs> I'm in front of it. <laughs> but I'm no but I know I'm 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 uh, alone there sometimes. Uh, lots of people don't like having their picture taken. They're not not comfortable on video, so so as they've been able to um, get more comfortable with the medium, I think it, it does bring out their their um, their personality, their authenticity, authenticity. Um, but writing it can be a little more tricky. Like even a social post, that's a little more casual. Um, but when it comes to blogs or emails, people just they they want to get more stiff almost, you know, and it's just loosen up, loosen up. 
Are there any other tips that you have for business owners to get consistent with their content marketing? Oh, I think, um, yeah, most, mostly the things that we've said, it's, it's, it, it really is about um, creating your own process, really. Systems and processes are going to help your business grow. But maybe another thing to look at is what it is you're producing. Do you have, um, for example, training, uh, workshops, um, those types of things? Often what you can do is kind of reverse engineer um, into your calendar what you're going to be talking about or presenting. So say you're having um, a course about, about a, you know, puppies, training puppies. <laughs> Let's stick to the theme here, right? Um, so in a month from now, you're going to have a, like an in-person thing, um, training with um, puppies <laughs> and, their, and, their, and their parents. Um, so what you might do is leading up to that, certainly you're going to have promotional pieces that go with that, um, you know, that are going to sell tickets or you've got to register, like those, those are all things that need to go out as well. But along with those, in order for people to get, it, and in case people don't know who you are, then you can produce content that shows your expertise, right? So it could be um, some free videos on your social sites or email or um, even on your blog. You can embed video on your website. You could do that. Um, you could do a blog post um, about that, whatever that particular, you know, like maybe that core, that puppy course is around something specific. Um, and so you can do those blog posts, that free content that you're, that you're giving away um, and just plug those into your calendar so you know what those topics are and um, and then you can deliver those. Yeah, that is a good one, definitely. So if people want to learn more about you and what you do, where should they go? Oh, uh, probably my website. Uh, that's that's my home base and link to everything else I have online. So uh, that's bonniechomika.com. So you can see my name in the bottom there. Um, uh, just .com. There's uh, at the top of the homepage, there's a, a free writing ebook, which I would recommend. It's because it's just everyday kind of dead simple things that you can use in your writing every day. It's not copywriting. It's not grammar. It's nothing like that. It's just like everyday things and not just for your writing, but even for video, when you're doing videos or any kind of communication with your audience, they're just simple tools to make a better connection with people um, in this busy, busy, um, busy world we have online. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us about content marketing. This was really cool. Oh, my pleasure. This is good. I love talking about content marketing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's it's just, on and on about marketing. <laughs> it's, just, it's so important. It's so important. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Carolyn. All right. I will talk to you later. Okay. Have a super day.